the morning. I woke up feeling really great because the I don't like the hot weather. So when I woke up this morning and the weather was sunny, but still a little cool, I felt really good. This is my favorite kind of weather today. Did you, do you have a positive thing to share, Miss Katie? You know, I got to go to uh, Cantini Park yesterday. I got to spend some time outside with one of my friends, which was really nice. Like you were saying, the weather was perfect. So So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start real quick talking about your supplies just to make sure you have everything. So you should have your special magic and this special clear liquid. It looks kind of like water, but maybe it's not. You need a little pipette because this is a science experiment and an art project. We're doing two things at once. Three paint brushes. Oh, I just realized I don't have. There we go. Your three paint brushes. So here's our three jars of paint. Three paint brushes, your pipette, some stirring sticks, and you can use those to stir up your paint. You can also shake it to get it re-stirred. And then some watercolor paper. And you want to check your paper because it might have it might have a side that's smoother than the other. And you want the side that's more textured. So the one that has the most bumps on it. And then we have a little tray just to keep all of our mess in a little small space because this is gonna be a little bit messier art project. All right, so now you have your supplies. I'm going to go ahead and change pins. So I'm Miss Heidi or just Heidi. I work in the launch pad at the library and here's Miss Katie. Morning. All right, so we've got some great songs and a story to help us get started today. The first thing that I think that we should do is warm up our hands and our fingers. So we're going to sing a really, really simple song to do this. So we're going to start out with the fingers on both of our hands, stretching up nice and tall, spread them out so that you can see the space in between them. And we're just going to sing. Bend and straighten, bend and straighten, clap, 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 roll them in a circle, roll them in a circle, tap, 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 tap. tap. All right, can we try that one more time? Bend and straighten, bend and straighten, clap, 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 roll them in a circle, roll them in a circle, tap, 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 tap. Doing that first thing in the morning or before you start in on a project can feel really good because then you get to move your hands and fingers and get them ready to work, right? And today, our story is called Georgia's Terrific Colorific Experiment by Zoe Persicle. And this is a story about somebody who is a scientist and they also discover how they can incorporate art into their experiments. So as I was telling Heidi, I was really excited when I found this story because I feel like this really kind of works with our theme here today. So this is Georgia. You can wave hello, say good morning. She comes from a family of fantastic artists. Her mother, father, brother, and grandma leave Georgia in awe of everything they create. (laughs) Even the family dog has some creative ideas. But Georgia is special. She dreams of being a scientist. 
from the vastness of the cosmos to the cell structures of plants and animals, she is fascinated by science. So you can see there's all kinds of different stuff that she's interested in, right? Plants and animals and space, so many different things to learn about. Georgia loves studying the works of famous scientists too. She's captivated by Marie Curie's studies on radioactivity. She admires Galileo Galilei's discovery of gravity, and she fawns over Isaac Newton's conclusions about the color spectrum. So Georgia is really lucky. She gets to learn about so many different things from all of these well-known scientists. One day, Georgia has an idea. I've read countless studies and handfuls of hypotheses, but I have never created my own unique experiment. If I can do that, I am sure to be a great scientist. So what Georgia is saying is that she has to start with her own guess. Maybe this will happen and then do an experiment to see if it's right. Need any help, her mother asks. I can show you how to sketch your plans. No, thank you. Let me give you a few tips, her father states. I think adding some color could really enhance your scientific findings. <laughs> that will not be necessary, Georgia says. I don't know, Georgia. You need a pop of visual awesomeness, her brother says. I can show you how to sculpt something amazing. So her whole family is offering their artistic skills to help her out. But Georgia says, I don't need any help. I am not an artist. I am a scientist. Science is about proper calculations and not silly imaginative ideas. Fine, her brother says, don't be like us. Go ahead with your fancy smancy calculator, books, and beakers. Hopefully your experiment doesn't bore you too much. Well, since my science seems to be boring to you, I can be found in my science hut alone. Oh no. So what is Georgia going to do? She is getting angry and she is stomping off all by herself. <sighs> but look at that beautiful spot she's found. Does that look like a good place to try some different experiments? I think so. I see some beautiful trees and plants, and she has some forest animals looking on too. Georgia can finally begin her experiment and be a true scientist. At first, she is having the most extraordinary time. But then she has some trouble getting started. I can study the color spectrum, but this has been done before. What about how gravity works? Uh, was that done before too? I'll create my own radioactive material, Georgia says, but that's not original or safe, is it? Hmm, sounds like Georgia's having a little bit of a slump. Georgia sighs. <sighs> She'll need to come up with her own ideas to create something special. Georgia has the motivation, so she wants to do it. But where's the inspiration? How do scientists come up with such amazing experiments? What am I missing? But then an idea strikes. How does my family get creative, she wonders. Georgia tries something new, something that's not from her library. It feels odd at first, but with every colorful beaker she fills and each new shape she draws, her excitement grows. So you can see that there's all of the science stuff, the beakers and the other scientific tools, numbers and letters and formulas, but she also has colors and creativity. It's time to head home. Georgia makes her way back. What do you want? Rubbing your boring science in our faces, asks her brother. I want to show you all something, Georgia says. Science can be a work of art too. Look at what Georgia created. Beautiful swirls of color 
I see pink and purple, yellow and blue. George's mom smiles. I bet you can teach us some fun science facts that will help us with our art. Georgia smiles back. And I bet you can give me some great art tips so I can invent more beautiful experiments. So the whole family is able to enjoy this together because art and science have met together. This is Georgia the scientist and her family of fantastic artists. They used to work separately, but now together they create sculptures, paintings, and experiments that leave everyone in awe. Even the family dog helps out. Georgia and her family agree that with art and science working in harmony, inspiration never runs dry. As you can see, everyone's working together. What a great ending to our story, because that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to take some science and some art, put them together, and make a great project. All right. Miss Katie, thank you so much for sharing that story. Welcome. I feel like that was a good find. I was really excited about it. That was fantastic. And you're right. We are going to work just like George's family to put art and science together. And I think when you put art and science together, you almost make magic. So today's project to me feels a little bit like a magic show in a way. And you'll see why. So we want to start with our blank piece of paper. And remember, I said you need to feel it. And you want the side that has the bumpy texture. That's the best side of the watercolor paper that's going to take all of our color best. And we have three different special paints here. And I will tell you all about their secret and what makes them extra special. So you may have different colors than me, that is okay. And you can shake them up to get them to mix. I'm gonna go ahead and take all the lids off. And they may settle out again. And that happens sometimes when we mix two different ingredients together. Sometimes they settle because one is heavier than the other. So it goes to the bottom and then the lighter thing comes to the top. So that's why we have our stirring sticks as well. If you need to stir a little bit to make it, to stir it all back together. And then we're gonna take our special clear liquid. So real quick, let me change the pin because this is what we do. So when we are doing science experiments, sometimes, not always, we have to smell, we might wanna smell something just a little bit. So we don't just stick it right to our nose. We do this thing that's called wafting. So if you put it in front of your nose a little bit, you can pull the air towards your face and see if it smells, does that smell like water to you? No, that smells different. So there's something special in this. Even though it's clear like water, it is not water. So for that, when, we, when it's time to use that, we're going to use our pipette. This is a pipette. Let me move this pin. There we go, let's go back here. So this I'm going to go ahead and put into my clear magic liquid. That's what I'm gonna call it so that it's ready to go. And then I'm going to start with, out of all these colors, actually, because it's so bright and sunny out, I'm gonna start with yellow. So pick one of your paint brushes, dip in your special magic paint, and we're gonna do whatever you want. You can write your name, draw your name. I'm just gonna do swirls with my special magic paint. Dip it in, stir it around. Oh, I love it how bright and sunny this color it is. It makes me feel like the outside. So I'm going for something abstract right now, just doing little swirls and twirls. Just gonna do little dots. You could, if you wanted to paint the whole thing, 
the whole piece of paper, it's all up to you. But this is kind of how I'm feeling today. The everything's feeling very loose and free for me. So I'm gonna paint with that, like that. And then I'm gonna pick a different paintbrush and I'm gonna go ahead and stir up my red paint. And the other thing I'm feeling, I guess today is about painting what I'm feeling. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint some hearts. Because I am feeling very loving today. I'm just, I love the weather. I am so happy and excited to be working with all of you. And then I think I'm gonna just do some splotches too. And I'm curious, cause I have yellow paint and I have red paint. So I'm gonna take one of these splotches and see what happens. I'm gonna use one of my stir sticks. What happens when I mix my yellow and red? And it looks like my red is overpowering my yellow a little bit. There we go. I'm getting kind of an orangey color now. Ooh, this looks like a sunset. Okay. Let's see. And now I'm going to take my other paintbrush. Nope. And my blue has settled. So if you look at your blue or your other color, because we haven't used it, like I said, it settles. And the heavy part of the paint goes to the bottom. And the lighter part of the paint goes to the top. So I'm going to stir it up. And then I'm going to do little shadows kind of along my yellow. Oh, and look, it's kind of bleeding together right there and making a neat green color. You can see the way some of your colors are bleeding into each other. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, but I got a little bit of the red paint in my blue and it made a purple color. So that's what happens when we get red and blue together. And kind of like Georgia, we are just experimenting to see what happens when we mix some of these different things together. Even though it's just an art, just an art project, it's actually science. This is teaching us all kinds of things about mixing colors. And we're gonna have one more fun part. My, my painting is very abstract, but I like that I have, I'm going to, I did get a little cup of water just for myself if I needed to rinse off some color because I know some of it kind of mixed a little. So if you wanna get a cup of water for your next one, you can always do that. I want to make, I really like this heart right in the middle there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. I feel like this is the center of my project. Okay. Okay, so here comes the magic part of our art project. This is where the science and the art meet each other. We're gonna take our mystery liquid and we're gonna do drops on our painting and see what happens. I'm gonna get really close. I'll put some right here. <gasps> It's getting fizzy. This is called a chemical reaction. So if you haven't figured out yet, what is in 
our paint. Our paint is a mixture of watercolors. So you can buy liquid watercolor and baking soda. That's the part that falls to the bottom. It's heavier than everything else. So that's the part that's going to the bottom. And the clear liquid in your jar is vinegar. Vinegar is an acid. And when vinegar and baking soda mix with each other, they make carbon dioxide. They have a chemical reaction. So you can go ahead and do little drops. I'm gonna pull this back up. Little drops all over and see and watch your paint fizz and grow and it's gonna move and travel. This is so much fun, watching it get fizzy. So like I said, it's kind of, to me, science. Sometimes we talk about magic, but to me, science is very much magic because amazing things like this happen when we combine chemicals and they create really neat reactions that we don't always expect. So once you think you're done, with your vinegar and you've got all the fizziness you want what you can always take your picture since there's a little bit of liquid on it and you could leave it like it is now and let everything kind of soak in and dry or you can swirl it by lifting your tray and see where things travel to I'm going to take some of my vinegar and put it on some of the not painted parts because the thing about watercolor paper too is that things travel where there's already liquid. Look at all those really cool colors we made too. So with my yellow, my blue, and my green, I was able to make a purple, a green, or my yellow, my blue, and my red, I was able to make a purple, there's green. With three colors, I have five other colors, or five total colors on my page now. Okay. This looks really cool, I think. Let's see, Miss Katie, I'm gonna add you here. Do you wanna show off yours a little bit? Sure, let's see, we can <laughs> I'm gonna have to move it. I don't know that I can pick up my paper. Let me just tip this down. So I made more um, like late lines and shapes on my paper. Um, and at the top, I had yellow um, squares that I added some blue to the middle. So when I put the vinegar on top, it all blended together, oh. make green. Mm. And then all of the other lines and shapes that I do started out being a little bit smaller. But once I added the vinegar, they expanded out, they bubbled out. And so they made bigger shapes. That's so cool. Do you guys see how you can do different things with the same um, supplies and come up with a different product? That's one of the reasons I love art. Give everybody the same supplies, but everybody probably has something a little different. But what do you think of these really cool magic special paints? Like I said, they're just um, liquid watercolor and baking soda. And it's the baking soda and the vinegar that combine to give us that chemical reaction. So we mixed science 
and art just like Georgia did in her family. And we got an amazing picture and painting. And we got to do, learn two new things together. Well, let's see, I'm going to move mine. I'm gonna be brave right now. If you don't have the space, I have a nice, a nice drop cloth. So I don't have to worry about just spilling off. I really like what Miss Katie did. And if you have some paper towels, you can always tap it a little bit to dry up. Okay. I'm gonna do three different shapes, I think, with this one. Just like Miss Katie did, she had her straight lines. I'm gonna do a red straight line right across the top. Mine came out a little thicker, I think. And then right under that, I'm going to do some blue circles. So one blue circle, two, and three. And then below that, I want to do, I think, yellow triangles. So triangles have three sides, like that, and three points. Okay, and let's see, I'm gonna try my vinegar again. See what happens when it bubbles up. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of my vinegar up at the top, I think, so that I have enough that now I'm going to tip my tray forward and hope that everything kind of runs down. Let's see what mixtures happen. It ran down right in the middle. That's interesting. Okay, let me do some bubbles. Foamy right on my blue circles. And I'm gonna tip that, see if anything happens. Oh, when you put a whole bunch on one, you get a really great fizzy sizzling sound. It's very satisfying for me. There's my second project. It's definitely different. It's very abstract. Kind of like with our marble project we did before too, you can tilt different directions and see what happens. Ooh, I think my favorite part on this one is I like what's happening here. This kind of looks like a flower almost to me, where the stem is kind of green here from the blue and yellow mixing. And then there's this yellow flower and a blue flower up here. So you can make stories about your pictures.
You can also use, if your pipette's, pipette is empty, it does a little bit of air. So I think, well, let's see, I'm gonna drop, you, so you can drop your um, liquid really low near it, or if you drop it from higher above, you can see what happens then too. <gasps> oh, I got some splashing. That's creating a cool effect too. So if there's more pressure from it, it makes little, it might splash and make little bubbles of, or little splotches of paint elsewhere. So there's all kinds of ways you can experiment with this. Just have fun, do what you want to do. Okay, one last experiment and you don't have to do this. If you want to save your paints because you wanna do this on some other paper, you can do that. But I just want you to see what happens when I, let's see if I can make this work. Okay, I am going to take and put some vinegar right into my paint just so we can see that chemical reaction up close. You do not have to do this. Whoa, look at all those bubbles. I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounds so cool. Okay, I'm gonna do one last one. Make all the bubble and fizz, create that carbon dioxide, make that chemical reaction. All right, friends, I'm gonna bring Miss Katie and me back here to the, all right. Miss Katie, what did you think of today's experiment in art? I thought it was fun. So I did a second one too. Very, very drippy, so I'm trying to be really careful. So I did um, blue on the top, <gasps> red on the bottom Ooh. and then I just tried to let the colors mix as much as possible and you can see that where the um the liquid traveled so the paint when it mixed with the vinegar um kind of made rivers almost so there's spots in the middle where the liquid mixed together so everything is kind of generally purple now that's really cool. Very, very neat. Let's see if I can hold this up and see what happens. It's a messy project. But sometimes art is messy and fun and that's okay. Because we're prepared for it. Exactly. Miss Katie and I both wore our aprons today. We put down something to protect our tables. We had the trays. Yes. All right. Well, it was great to have you all here today with us. You can always send us an email to digitalmaker at itpld.org with pictures of your art. We love to see them and we like to share them with all the other people here, all of the other staff and say, look at how amazing the children of Indian trails are. They're talented and they're smart and they have such great ideas. We like to share them and tell them all about that. But we look forward to seeing your paintings if you decide to send them to us and share them with us. Thank you, Katie, for joining me and thank you, all for coming in today. It was so great to see you. Bye -bye. We hope you have a great day. Goodbye.